that. Don't cry, don't cry. It's okay, it's okay. Hold on, we need to give him some air. Yeah. Give him some when air. the food's so good, you cry up. Yo, what's going on everybody? If you guys have not noticed, food halls are the trendiest way to serve food right now. They are popping up in every single city. These locally curated boutique food courts are impacting the restaurant industry in a major way. In fact, a lot of people, especially millennials, are choosing to go to these before even traditional restaurants. There's already 20 of these in New York alone. What is all the hype about? Why is this the new wave? What implications will it have for the restaurant industry moving towards the future? I don't know. But you know what? I'm outside of Canal Street Market. It's a new food hall between Soho and Chinatown. I'm here to talk to the owners and meet up some friends to eat some dope food. Let's go. I am now with the owner of Canal Street Market and Chinatown native, Phil Chong. Yo, welcome to Canal Street Market, man. Yo, in 2018, what is like the basic description of a food hall? Yeah, it's a collection of different vendors selling all different types of food. Ours is unique in the sense that they're really representative of the community of Chinatown. Um, and we also have a really good mix of retail vendors here too. But how is it different than a food court or a night market that a lot of people have been to? Food courts are usually at the bottom of a department store or of a mall. Night markets are typically outside. Um, what makes a food hall different is that it's the destination itself. You're coming here not for a department store, it's not outdoors, you're, you're coming here for the food or for the retail. We have art shows, we have music shows, um, we have classes for kids. So you guys are adding a bunch of entertainment and other elements just besides food. Yeah, it's all about the experience. Why do you think people are flocking to food halls now? I think it's the variety. Um, you're able to have ceviche, to Japanese food, to Chinese food, to bubble tea, to kakagori, all these things within 10 steps of each other. Oh, definitely. I mean, I feel like for millennials, it fits so well with social media. Yeah. Where it's like, you can go do a food crawl with your friends without going to different restaurants. Yeah. It's all contained in one single space. Yo, Phil, thank you so much for that. Absolutely. That was really informative, and I hope that people now understand food halls, and particularly this one, a lot better. But man, I'm pretty hungry. Uh, you should do your job and uh, definitely have some of the food over there. All right, let's check it out. All right, now we're on the food side of the Canal Street Market, and one of the funnest things to do when going to a food crawl is going with some hungry friends. So here, I got Jenny. Hey. I got Benson. What's up, guys? I got Christina. Hi, everyone. We are all very hungry. There's a lot of unique foods here. Let's, let's go. go. All right, yo, Benson, what are the first three spots that we're gonna go to in round one of our Canal Street Market food crawl? All right, guys, we're gonna bring you to Mission Ceviche, a Peruvian ceviche spot. They got avocado mousse, fresh fish, all deliciousness in one bowl. Next up, we're going to Namuang Kwai. It's a staple piece in Chinatown called Namwa, and Kwai in Chinese actually means fast. And the third spot we're going to is Ilili, a Mediterranean spot. Lebanese style. And do not forget about some of the best boba from coast to coast. Boba Guys is here at CSM. How do you girls decide what foods you're gonna post on Instagram? I post whatever like I saw on in Instagram first, so if it's like really pretty aesthetically looking, I'm gonna go after it and make my way to go find it. Post anything that's very like aesthetically pleasing and has nice walls in the back. So you guys are uh real shallow. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Is that the word for it? Is that the word for it? <laughs> I'm ready for round one. All right guys, here's the spread for round one. We got a lot of delicious food here. We got pea vine shrimp dumplings from Nam Hua. So that is called Dao Miu Ha Bao. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So I'm from Northern China, and usually they don't eat a lot of dim sum, but my family does, because we're, I've grown up in America. We have pork and shrimp bacon dumplings with Whoa. XO sauce. No way. Bacon? And I always appreciate Nam Hua because they're always like innovating, like adding bacon XO sauce. Those are not usually things that, you know, are put together in a dish, so. Shout out to Wilson from Nam Hua. It's nothing like I tasted before. No, it's, it's, it's so different. I think you never get bacon in a dumpling. No. 
Only time I've had bacon in a dumpling, you go to a Polish restaurant, you get like pierogies. That'll have like bacon with like sour cream, a little bit of potato, cheese. Yeah. Pierogies are kind of like dumplings. I think you guys gotta try the seasoning on the chicken. Yeah, that is something new. Like I would say Namwa, definitely putting a twist on everything. They pack that thing with a lot of seasoning. This is what you're supposed to do at a food hall. You're supposed to share. I want the whole plate to myself. And then I'll talk and try different kind of stuff from different places. Okay, so we have beef, we got hummus. Oh man, we got the cilantro. It's like mm. a deconstructed tabule. Mm. It's got like the za'atar spice on top too. Mm. Really special spice in Mediterranean cooking. Um, so like a lot of Syrian, Lebanese, like they'll put it on top. But then it, all, you, it also gets cooled down with a lot of hummus and kind of a, a sourness that yeah. kind of makes everything feel a lot more Cold. healthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hate tomatoes. Like, I will uh, not eat tomatoes. Would you eat this tomato on camera? I'll do it for, for the YouTube. Camera. All right, guys. Wow. Thank you, Ryan, for eating tomatoes on our channel. MVP. I'm so honored. Eat the whole thing, man. The whole thing. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is like a... Still not my favorite. <laughs> this might be the most exciting to me personally because my favorite ceviche is Peruvian ceviche. Ceviche originally came from Peru, and Peru, if you guys don't know, has a lot of different influences. It even has the seaweed salad that's Japanese because there are a lot of Japanese people in Peru, a lot of Chinese as well. So here you have avocado mousse, you have potato mousse, you got these big chunks of seafood like shrimp, and then you have a bunch of corn too. It feels super light too. Yeah. It reminds me of a Pokeball. Okay, shrimp and octopus in this bite right here. When the food's so good, you cry out. Man, that is probably my favorite thing we ate so far. Yeah, for sure. Like, it's el mejor, me encantan el servicio de Peru. Ah, That was round one, but we got a lot more food coming because there's some really innovative dishes that are coming up that we got to show you how they're made. Round two. two. Okay, now it is round two, and we have a, another wide variety of food. We have traditional Japanese dishes from two different Japanese spots. This is from Kuraobi. This is actually a branch off of Ipodo. And Ipodo is like one of the most famous ramen spots in one all of, of New York. But usually you don't eat ramen out of like a paper bowl. Yeah. And this is kind of their thing. It's a transportable ramen. That's, look at that technique. Wow. You gotta do that spin. You gotta and do that spin. It's pretty spicy. Yeah. 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 How is it compared to like the normal Ipodo? Noodles. It's the same noodle, for sure. Uh, I think it's a bit thicker. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was spicy. Was it? Right? So this is the Hokkaido. They use a third wave coffee pour over technique. Um, combines two of my favorite things, coffee and Japanese food. This is like a rice Neither. soup. Yeah. It's actually different than kanji. So what happens is it's actually cooked rice mm -hmm. and they pour soup on top. This one is miso. Kanji is the rice is cooked in with it and kind of like diffuses and separates and, and becomes like a gooey mixture. With the little fish eggs in it. Yeah, you got little me. pieces of salmon. You have seaweed. It's really simple. It's like comfort food. Comparable? That's pretty good. It's no kanji though. It's no kanji. It's, a, it's no. not kanji. <laughs> <laughs> they call it Comex, Korean Mexican fusion. What makes this different from other Comex spots, um, you do have the Kogi here. The way it's prepared, they blowtorch it, and it really gives it that like charred, kind of like Korean barbecue mm. taste. So you still got that fire kind of charredness. Char it seems more like a bro food. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the ladies, yeah. you're like- It's all you, it's all you, yeah, it's all you. It's not too heavy. Right. And that is like a very like, I would say that is a very well done Comex dish right there. We have Luke's Lobster. That's a straight from Maine. Number one lobster roll. This is probably the most well-known lobster roll chain probably in the world. They focus on traceable sustainability. They use lemon butter, they use fresh lobster, they use their secret seasoning, soft bun. I've only had a lobster roll a few times in my life and I never liked them as much as this one. Me this is the best one, yeah. Taste the butter. Taste the butter. Yeah, yeah. It's not too overpowering. I've had lobster rolls that were way too much like mayonnaise and cream. Yeah. This is really bomb. It kind of lets the lobster shine for itself. Like it, it doesn't yeah. try to mask it. What was wow. your guy's favorite? I think mine's a lobster. A lobster? Yeah. Lobster? And you're gonna roll with oh. the ramen. Oh. 
brings me back to Japan. Got some dessert. Yes, kakigori is Japanese shaved ice. We got Gaston here from uh, Bonsai Kakigori. He's gonna show us a demonstration of how to make Japanese shaved ice, otherwise known as kakigori. To say that kakigori has really two big differences from you know the very popular Taiwanese shaved ice or maybe like Korean shaved ice. The biggest difference are one that we use clear ice, so what you get is very thin texture. The second biggest difference is that we use as fresh of ingredients as we can. Sometimes when you get a snow cone or another type of shaved ice, there's a lot of artificial stuff that people use. We make everything in-house. Fresh fruit and handmade toppings. This is the strawberries and cream kakigori, right? Mmm. That's wow. so fresh. Wow. That is delicate, man. It's like it's that's so really good. You know what? It really lets the strawberry and the cream shine. Yeah. yeah. That closes up our food hall video. I mean, we went everywhere, talked with the owner, Phil Chong, here about food hall culture, saw some new innovative techniques, everything from the avocado mousse, the potato mousse. Okay, you got the third wave pour over miso. Okay, you got transportable ramen. You got torched beef comex bowls. You got live shaved ice. I think food halls are a more boutique version of cafeteria. It's a growing trend and definitely check it out with some friends. All right guys, in the comments below, let us know what your food hall ideas are. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace. I'm so glad I came today. I learned so much. Be sure to check me out on my channel from Christina. You can find me on my Instagram, Jenny underscore the underscore creator underscore. Follow me at Ryan William Benson on Instagram.